Leandros, later known as Quintus, began his journey as a young and steadfast battle brother in the command squad of the Ultramarine Second Company, serving under the esteemed Captain Dimitrian Titus during the fierce liberation of Graia in the 41st millennium. A century passed and the once ardent warrior rose to become the chaplain of the same company, now bearing the name Quintus, carrying with him a legacy marked by loyalty, duty and a struggle with the shadows of the past. Greeting lore lovers and welcome back to Lyndrad. Today we are diving deep into the journey of Leandros, the once aspiring ultramarine who followed a path twisted with conflict, duty and redemption. From his early days as a devoted soldier to his transformation into the vengeful chaplain Quintus, his story is one of powerful loyalty and even greater suspicion. So settle in as we unravel the tale of Leandros in Space Marine 2. Leandros was the newest member of Captain Dimitrian Titus' command squad during the first battle for Graia, a forged world under assault by the Orc War, led by Warlord Grimskull. As the Ultramarine Second Company deployed to the planet, their fleet came under heavy attack, forcing many Ultramarines, including Leandros, to descend to the surface using jump packs in a chaotic landing that scattered their forces. Despite the confusion, Leandros regrouped with Captain Titus and veteran sergeant Sidonius, Titus' closest comrade. The three joined forces with 2nd Lieutenant Miras, 203rd Cadian Regiment, to repel the Orc invaders, though Leandros felt disdain for the guardmen, seeing them as frail and mentally unfit compared to the transhuman might of the Space Marines. His contempt grew as they encountered more survivors, whose weaknesses he dismissed with patronizing disdain. In their mission to secure the Ford world, Titus' squad crossed paths with Inquisitor Drogon, who revealed he had come to Graia to develop a powerful new weapon, the Psychic Scorch, powered by warp energies. Drogon sought the Space Marines' help to protect it from the Orcs. Titus, Sidonius and Leandros managed to keep the Scourge out of Orc hands, Though Titus briefly held the weapon, a fact that startled Drogon, as the weapon's warp energies should have killed anyone touching it. Leandros took note, suspicious of Titus' unexplained resistance to warp energy, but when Titus insisted he had no answer and ordered them to press on before the Orc regrouped, Leandros set aside his doubts, albeit reluctantly. The Ultramarines escorted Drogon and the weapon to a safer base where the Inquisitor intended to activate the Psychic Scorch against Grimskull's forces. Designed to resonate with Xeno's Psychic Signatures, the Scourge was meant to annihilate alien life. However, upon activation, the weapon didn't destroy the Orcs. Instead, it opened a warp rift above Graia, summoning the Chaos Sorcerer Lord Nemeroth and his warband of heretic Astartes and demons. Only then did they realize Drogon had been slain long ago and his body was merely a vessel for a demon serving Nimeroth, who had used him to unleash chaos upon Graia. As Nimeroth's forces closed in, Grimskull attacked the sorcerers, giving the Ultramarines a brief opening. Under Titus' command, they reclaimed the Psychic Scorch and used it to power the Warlord-class Titan Invictus, which fired upon the Warp Rift, weakening its hold over Graia. Following this, Titus entrusted Sidonius with the power source of the Psychic Scorch, ordering him to take it back to their strike cruiser, Fury of Descent, to keep it from falling into the hands of Chaos. Titus and Leandros held off Nimeroth's forces to give Sidonius time to escape. However, as Sidonius reached the landing pad, Nimeroth teleported behind him and struck, impaling him with his lightning glows. Titus and Leandros could only watch as Nimeroth killed Sidonius and vanished with the precious power source, leaving the two ultramarines to grapple with the loss of their loyal comrade. Sorry for this quick break, if you are enjoying this story so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to Lyndrag, it really helps the channel grow, allowing me to bring you even more of the lore you love. With vengeance burning in his heart, Titus commanded Leandros to guard Sidonius' body until an apothecary could arrive to extract his gene seed. Then, he directed Leandros to join the Imperial counterattack while he set his mind on hunting down Nimeroth. Titus intended to kill the sorcerer before he could use the stolen power source to draw in enough warp energy to become a demon prince, but Leandros opposed this plan, seeing it as reckless if not outright aiding Nimeroth's designs. 
Leandros argued that Titus had displayed an unnatural resistance to warp energies ever since Nimero's forces had invaded Graia, a resilience that had drawn the sorcerer's curiosity. Though he denied fearing Titus would succumb to heresy, Leandros believed that whatever caused Titus' immunity might ultimately aid the sorcerer. Titus, dismissing these concerns, declared himself unwavering in loyalty to the Emperor and set off to confront Nimrod, leaving Leandros behind. But Leandros' suspicions gnawed at him. Convinced that Titus' warp immunity was a sign of corruption, he contacted the Inquisition, reporting his captain as a heretic. Meanwhile, Titus tracked down and killed Nimrod, sealing the warp rift and halting the invasion just as reinforcements from the Black Templar chapter, led by Inquisitor Trax, arrived. Though Titus' triumph had secured Graia, Leandros' accusation of heresy could not go unanswered. Inquisitor Trax placed Titus under arrest. As he was taken into custody, Leandros approached Titus, asserting that the Codex Astartes left no room for doubt. No untainted space marine could have resisted the warp as Titus had. Titus, saddened, replied that the Codex was a guide, not a set of unbreakable laws, and that an Astartes' worth lay in their choices within those principles. A test, he said, that Leandros had failed. Titus then boarded the Thunderhawk, bound for the Inquisition, leaving Leandros to watch as his former mentor disappeared into the skies. He would not see Titus again for over a century. More than a century had passed since their last encounter, and Leandros, now a chaplain of the Ultramarines known as Quintus, had risen through the ranks, embodying the spiritual guidance and discipline of his chapter. When Titus, mortally wounded after his death watch killed Tim's destruction on Kadaku during the Fourth Tyrannic War, was brought back by the Ultramarines, Quintus was the force to visit him upon his awakening as a Primaris Marine, reborn after crossing the Rubicon Primaris. Titus' initial instinct was to rejoin the Death Watch, but Quintus reminded him that the Inquisition had cleared him of any taint, and if redemption was his goal, he needed to return to his chapter and prove his loyalty anew. Reinducting Titus into the Ultramarines, Quintus urged him to keep his past hidden and directed him to report to Captain Sevastus Acheron. The wary Acheron accepted Titus as a Primaris Lieutenant for the Ultramarines Second Company granting him a small, reduced squad to aid in Dresidio's campaign. Through intense battles, Titus proved himself, helping to defeat the tyrannids of High Fleet Leviathan and foil the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion's plot to seize a Chaos Relic hidden within Project Aurora. At the campaign's end, Quintus praised Titus for his valor, but cautioned him that the threat of Chaos corruption remained, warning that should Titus ever truly fall, he would not hesitate to carry out his duty. Then, Quintus removed his call helm, revealing himself as Leandros, Titus' former subordinate from the liberation of Graia and the one who had brought his ordeal with the Inquisition upon him. In that moment, Titus realized that his journey toward redemption had not only restored his own fate, but had also served as a path to redemption for them both. Thanks for watching lore lovers, if you enjoyed this tale be sure to like, share and subscribe and don't forget to join our discord. Let's build a cozy community of lore lovers where we can dive even deeper into the worlds we love to explore. Until next time, stay curious and keep the lore alive. <laughs>